Pennsylvania mother is suing her child's school district after alleging that the teachers are bullies. The mother is suing a local school district claiming teachers mocked her daughter with disabilities. Channel 11's Mike Holden is live. Call by. She's a good call. She has a pretty smile. Teacher comes in. She can walk. These are just some of the insults that were accidentally left in a voicemail on Beth Suhone's phone. The voices on the other end are her daughter with special needs, former Claysville Elementary School teachers. They have no respect for children, especially children with special needs. The teacher initially called Suhan back in February of 2015 to inform her that her daughter was struggling in school, but he never properly hung up the phone and continued to talk. Suhan's daughter has Turner syndrome, which causes developmental and learning issues. She says she never would have thought the people she trusted with her child would act like this. Disturbing on many fronts. Obviously, you like to believe you send your child, particularly one with special needs, to school yeah. to be taught and respected. Turner syndrome, chromosomal abnormality, and these, these children can have delayed abilities when it comes to learning. And so to know this is happening is scary. But from a legal perspective, she has now sued the school district for yeah. a couple of different things. Yeah, the parents' lawsuit is a discrimination lawsuit. She said, look, under Americans uh, with Disabilities Act, these are uh, clear statements of animus towards individuals with disabilities, not just her child, but also the entire classroom of students with special needs. And she's also suing because apparently uh, the school ended a special education classroom that was set up uh, a program for this student without the parent's knowledge. And is she also hoping that in this way the school districts will discipline or oh, terminate teachers who have this she horrendous hopes, attitude? And the parents said that in the pr uh, press conference she gave with her attorney that these teachers need training uh, and maybe even to be removed from the classroom. Let's face it, teaching special needs kids can be challenging. It takes a compassionate person to do so. And if you don't have the heart for working with special needs kids, do not go into the profession. Do not go 100%. into the classroom. And, and it's the Edit school. yourself. And it's the Resign. School. Quit. <laughs> Leave the classroom because these kids deserve better. We're now going to adjudicate in favor of the mother here based on things that were said that these teachers, as disgusting as they may be, can say, well, you know, all I said is she has a pretty smile. She can walk. I, I'm curious how legally that, that case would evolve. Yeah, no doubt we all have a First Amendment right to uh, express our opinions and to make statements. But those rights have to be balanced against the rights of students with disabilities to be in a classroom free of discrimination. So your First Amendment rights come head to head with the student's right to be in a classroom where she's not discriminated against on the basis of her disability. And the court has to weigh that. And in a case like this, I think having this recording is going to be very powerful evidence, probably Probably that causes the school to want to settle this case out of court. I don't think any school is going to want a jury of six people or 12 people Listen. listening to its no. teachers talk about its students in that way. They're not going to win that case. And, and better train and select the teachers who are working with yes. these incredibly special needs children who need that extra effort and, and the most compassionate of the teachers. And we're going to lift these. these students up. Yeah. Kids with special needs uh, can learn, they can thrive, they can be productive members of our society. They just need to be nourished and, and you know, coddled and loved and supported. They and do. I will make a comment, though. I don't think I realized until this last year how commonplace it is for this type of language and talking negatively about others. You see it, so many people in political office now disparaging others, and it's just, it's, it's rampant. I'm shocked yeah. by it because the, the things that, that people say behind closed doors, that's a true reflection, and it's of just it's shocking to me. Well, Travis, I think what you're saying is that when you have people place. in positions of power making these statements, it gives license to that's other my people point. to feel as if that's it's my okay point. to ridicule, and, and, to malign. And, and so and my point is okay. only that I, I sometimes worry that when this is pervasive at the highest levels, and then you got some teachers who are terrible teachers, but... You know, they're probably, they're prob well, this is, this is what you do to become a really powerful person. You know, there's this copying behavior, and it's, I, that's why I'm troubled sometimes in life right now. Because you're thinking, you're a kid, you're realizing, well, hey, the, the, these powerful people in the world, 
they say whatever they want. And so if I say whatever I want, and it's just a crazy, it's a crazy time. I think, I think across the board, we're seeing an increase and a normalization of bullying. Yes. yes. I think the your verbal Honor, bullying Honor, in many ways is order? more damaging yes. than the physical bullying. Put a stop to this.